very happy to have Daniel preaching this morning. I'm so yeah. glad that the Hammonds are here at Crossroads. Yeah. Uh, he leads our youth. Are we talking about that? He's, he's, he's kind of taken over. He might be I appreciate that hard charging army spirit, but you know, I'm just saying. Now I know what he looks like. But we are so glad that he does a fantastic job with our youth. Um, I have watched um, him, him do interactive youth services and just come up with great ideas. And we are blessed that the Hammonds have chosen to be with us in Jonathan. We are excited to hear him preach this morning. Amen. So give him a warm welcome. Amen. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. 
And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Father God, I pray for this yes, time we have this morning Thank to you. come and worship you and to receive your word. I pray for that you would use me, use me, anoint me, use me as your vessel. Amen. Set my, myself aside and just go before me through this message. I pray for ears to hear your word. I pray for eyes to see your word in action. And I pray for hearts to receive your word this morning. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. These passages of scripture clearly tell us that we are to go out and preach the truth. As believers in Jesus Christ, the word of God is what shapes, it's what guides, and it is what directs our walk in this life. The gospel message, however, is not simply just for our individual purpose, not just for us to hold on to as we walk, go through our life. It's not just a personal possession. Rather, it is to be shared with others. So I ask, how fast are we sharing the gospel message right. of Jesus Christ right. with others? Others are not just those we know at work or at school or our neighbors. Others includes those we meet in the marketplace. When we go to the store, the shopping mall, whatever shopping malls are around, there's not many left anymore. Um, but there are those we run into, even when we go out to eat at the restaurants. It includes others who we pass by on the street. And we communicate the gospel not only in what we say, but also in what we do. I took a few, uh, I took some time to research some various methods of communication and some of the timing that these communication methods took. So let's take a look first at this <laughs> lovely bird, the carrier pigeon. This method of communication was well established over 3,000 years ago. Historically, pigeons carried messages in only one direction, just a one-way bird, one-way flight. That direction was only back to their home. They had to be transported manually in order to get them to fly back home with the message. And it was originally used to announce the winners from the Olympic events. However, they were trained to go back and forth from their, they had their home, so they would take food and set it in a different location in order to train those birds. They knew where their food was, so they would manage to make up to two round trips on a daily basis, covering about 100 miles a day. Their reliability has lent itself to occasional use on mail routes, such as the Great Barrier Pigeon Grand Service that was established between Auckland, New Zealand, the suburb of Newton, and the Great Barrier Island in 1897. This was possibly the first regular air mail service in the world. <laughs> Certainly it was the first air mail stamps were issued for the Great Barrier Pigeon Gram service, which existed from 1898 to 1908. In the 21st century, homing pigeons were still employed by certain remote police departments in eastern India in order to provide emergency communication services that followed natural disasters. However, due to the expanded use of the internet, the internet put these birds out of out on unemployment in March of 2002. <laughs> because the police pigeon service retired them, gave them an early retirement. Unemployment, early retirement. <laughs> Just one more simple fun fact about these birds. The Taliban banned the keeping and or use of these birds in Afghanistan. So there's your final lesson for the day. <laughs> Just an, another method of communication is the telegraph system. The first telegraphs came in the form of optical telegraph, which included the use of smoke signals, beacons, or reflected light. 
And these have existed since the ancient times. Let's take a look at the, some of the timing and speeds of these methods of communications. First, we have the smoke signal. It can be seen up to 470 miles away within a few hours. So that's quite a long time just to get a signal out there if you have an emergency. <laughs> Next is the use of light. Lighthouses on the coastal shores that send out a message to the marine crafts as a caution light, notifying the ships that there is land nearby, so be careful when approaching. So the light is essentially saying, slow down, you're approaching land. The speed of light travels, anyone know how much the speed of light travels? That's the speed of light. I figured there's going to be a little bit of action, uh, interactive here. The speed of light travels 186,000 miles per second. Another method of communication is audio, the audible communication. When you hear the sirens of emergency vehicles and warning sounds, this method of communication boldly announces to others who are in the way, emergency, get out of the way. As we are often seeing ambulance, police, fire trucks, when their lights are on, their sirens are on, they're weaving in and through traffic. So you just better stop and get out of the way. But the speed of sound travels an average of 1,126 feet per second. For the military personnel, um, I've often questioned why do we have, as part of our physical fitness test, a two mile run? Well, I have enjoyed getting into running some. I've always wondered why is it important for the two mile run? So when I was, I asked a, a well knowledgeable uh, chaplain assistant or religious affairs specialist, what was the idea for the military to put in a two mile distance run for the APFT? I think he's pretty trustworthy, he knows what he's talking about. So he was explaining, in the earlier days of military intelligence, before the days of electronic telegraphs and Morse code, military companies were strategically set up with, on an average of one mile distance between its companies during times of battle. Each company had messenger boys. The messenger boys, these young men, had to be fast runners in order to get the messages between the two companies. So the messenger boy is sent from the commander of Alpha Company to the commander of Bravo Company. And it was necessary for that young boy to be able to run that one mile within a matter of five to six minutes. Who wants to run a five, six minute pace in their next run? No. No. I'm lucky to stick to eight and a half to nine. You would. The messenger boy would then wait about two to three minutes, whatever time it took for the commander from Bravo Company to write down his response. That kind of pace would kill me. <laughs> and then that boy had to run the same mile back to Alpha Company, the same amount of time within five to six minutes. Therefore, the communication lapse for the messenger boy within the military was roughly about 12 to 15 minutes. Hence the part of the expression we have today, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Which is also the title of my message. Do not shoot the messenger. From our passage, Jesus Christ calls us, calls out, calls us to go out and share the gospel message. The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. He conti Jesus continues to say, I send you out as lambs among wolves. There are still many who are in need of this gospel message. The gospel message is the good news that we are called to proclaim, which is the death, the burial, and resurrection right. of Jesus Christ, which we just celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ last week. Right. Take note what Jesus says, I send you out as lambs among the wolves. And Peter tells us in his first epistle, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, 
seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. The military messenger boy, as he runs to and from each company, he faces danger from the enemy. He continues to run through those danger zones, dodging the ammunition that the enemy is sending his way. And there's just one goal and one purpose for that messenger, and that's to get that message into the hands for whom that message is intended. Being a part of the body of Jesus Christ, the gospel message is not intended simply to be shared within these four walls that we call the church. It is not simply meant for you to just come in on a weekly basis, sit on a pew, receive that message, right. and hold it to yourself. Right. The, me the gospel message is intended, we come in, and then we take that message out and we share it within our community, right. with those that we know and those we want to see saying, whether we love them or not, know them or not, we need to share that gospel message truth right. with Jesus Amen. Christ with those in our communities. We are to be ready at all times, ready to go out into the world, ready to give that message to that we have in our possession and to share it with those who need to receive it. I actually had a couple weeks ago, I was doing some Uber driving, and this guy was stranded at the airport, and some kind soul paid his fare from the airport to Mansfield. Wow. Benefited my pocket, I'm, I'm grateful, and he was benefited by someone else putting that bill, which was a statement. But in that 45 minute to an hour drive, I was able to share the gospel with him, that young man. And those are times that we can share the gospel. Even Uber, I take it, I enjoy sharing Christ with my passengers. I will listen to what they're, how they're talking, and I will come in with some sort of commonality so that we can talk about Scripture yes, to, right. as best I can. A few months ago, I had I had a ride from the air to the airport. And it happened to be the district superintendent of the Methodist Church for Ohio. Like, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't need to share the gospel message with that with that lady. Because she already has a gospel message. But I can share about our church right. as well. Right. And what we're doing as part of a team to share the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. The enemy is a spiritual warfare, and it is all around us. But he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Right. Amen. Amen. With Jesus Christ at our side, we are able to dodge the attacks of the adversary. And daily, we are to put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the, the, in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. The Lord Jesus Christ could not be any clearer when he tells us to go out and make disciples of all nations. That's all nations. Not just our family, not just select people groups, right. not just a select country, right. but we are to go out into all nations, baptizing them, teaching them, training them, discipling them. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not only for a select few. God is no respecter of persons. God does not look at the outside. He does not care about skin color. God does not care if you're male or female. He doesn't care what nationality you come from. He doesn't care about your wealth if you're rich or poor. A couple of years ago, Mandisa came out with a song that sums it up. We all bleed the same. In the army, we have a statement, we wear the same color.
So we are there for each other. We don't care about gender. We don't care about color. We wear the same uniform, so we fight together. Same thing within the church. We need to work together to reach all people. Right. Because we all do bleed the same red blood. Amen. God cares about the inside. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Looking back at our passage in Luke, verse 6, And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If, it is, if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his wages. In sharing the gospel message of Jesus Christ, we are not simply called to just give the message. We are not simply called to just tell them what we know. We are there to remain with them, to disciple them, to teach them, and to bring them in to, in order for them to go out and do the same. Right. It's a rolling effect. As disciples, ourselves, we are to remain with them. It is necessary to follow up with the receiver of the message. Part of making disciples for Jesus Christ is spending time with that new believer in Christ Jesus. I want to mention a documentary, a documentary entitled Unbroken. It's about an Olympic, Olympic runner, Louis Zuccherini. He qualified and participated in the 1936 Olympics, where he was, uh, the Olympics were, that took place in Berlin, Germany. However, his chance to return to the Olympics for the 1940 Games, where he was actually projected to win the gold for that year, it came to a screeching halt due to the outbreak of World War II and the games were canceled. Because of the war, Zemberini decided to go ahead and enlist in the Army Air Corps, which J.D. I know is considered what now? The Air Force. <laughs> Back then, it was the Army Air Corps. So, but while they were, he was flying out on a mission over the Pacific Ocean, him and ten fellow airmen, his plane went down, and of the 11 service members on board, himself and two other service members survived the crash, leaving them stranded on a life raft. While floating out in the middle of nowhere, one of the men happened, unfortunately died at sea. After 47 days drifting in the ocean, the remaining two survivors found themselves 2,000 miles away from that crash site. And unfortunately, they also found themselves in enemy territory of the Japanese waters. Zemperini and the other surviving airmen, they were taken captive, becoming prisoners of war. They were subject to torture, both physically and psychologically. They were beaten. They were starved. During the, their captivity under Japanese POW camps, Zemperini began to pray. He asked God to protect him and to give him the strength to endure. He made a promise to God that he would serve him if he would be able to return home. Zemperini's captivity lasted more than two years. When the war ended, he did, he did return home, but suffering from the scars and tormented by the torture that he endured, Unfortunately, he turned to alcohol. In 1949, Zemperini began, began his healing process to overcome that situation. The healing process to overcome the nightmares and the torment that he endured from the Japanese POW camp. By the encouragement of his wife, and with great reluctance, he agreed to attend a Billy Graham crusade in Los Angeles, California. It was during the message of the Word of God 
And Graham's preaching reminded him of his prayers that he prayed during his time in Japanese captivity. Praying, the prayers that he prayed while he was floating adrift out in the middle of nowhere in the waters of the Pacific Ocean. And it was at that crusade Zemperini had recommitted his life to Jesus Christ. Zemperini didn't have anyone preaching to him. He just knew that there was a God to call upon for help in his time of distress, his time of need, to, with, to hold him up, to give him the strength that he needed to survive those more than two years in captivity. Zamperini's recommitted life in Jesus Christ does not come to an end of a chapter in his life. He began to evangelize. He began to share the message and with an emphasis on forgiveness. He opened his heart and spirit up to the will of God, sharing his experiences and message to many that he could come in contact with. The message was not only contained on American soil, but he even visited the guards from his POW days that held him captive, letting them know that he had forgiven them. In 1950, he visited the Sugamo prison in Tokyo, where many war criminals were being held. Zamperini embraced those who stepped forward, who acknowledged that they recognized him, they knew who he was. And he even expressed to those, to those guards, his former guards, he expressed his forgiveness to them, even having the opportunity to lead some of his prior captors to Jesus Christ. About every year, Reverend Will Graham, Billy Graham's son, has services for newly enlisted service members at Fort Jackson. I believe the Graham ministry goes to all installations, but I happened to be at Fort Jackson for some chaplain training, and I had the privilege to attend one of the Protestant services for the basic trainees. That gymnasium was filled with new soldiers. Young men and women, all who signed up to serve our country. All the bleachers in this gymnasium and all the chairs on the floor were taken, leaving standing room only in the upper level where there were no seats available. When Reverend Will Graham finished speaking his message to those young men and women, the service members, on making a decision to follow Jesus Christ, Really, there is about 75% of them who raise their hands to commit or recommit their lives to Jesus Christ. As a part of the altar service, the soldiers were given cards to fill out. Now, what's the purpose of these cards? Billy Graham, or Will Graham, could not simply go alongside all these soldiers who decided to commit their lives to Jesus Christ. But these cards were intended for the installation chaplains to get to know these soldiers, to make the connection that, they, that these soldiers needed in order to hold on to their decision to follow Jesus Christ, to take the gospel message not just with them for that one day experience, but to take it back home when they're home on leave. Or to take it onto the battlefield with them if, when they're, they are deployed. And to take that message, share the message of hope in Christ with them to their battle buddies. These cards are used for the chaplains to make that connection. To be there as a discipleship program with those soldiers. To hold them accountable and take ownership of their decision. The chaplain is able to take the time and effort to teach these young men and women biblical doctrine and truth. However, we see that on a larger scale. Was that picture not up there the whole time? It was. Okay, there's a picture. <laughs> Why did someone tell me? But that's on a larger scale. So allow me to focus on our little corner. Appleton, 
and Cooper Road. After each service, when we go out of these doors, we are stepping out into a spiritual battlefield. We are the messengers to share the gospel message of Jesus Christ throughout Johnstown, throughout Mount Vernon, in Marengo, Fredericktown, Centerburg, wherever we come from to come to church and wherever we live, we are to share the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And we are sharing that message, and it's taking time to teach, to train, to equip others, and to grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. This is the method that started this very church four or five years ago. Right. When our pastor and his family was taking their time out to come to Johnstown to teach home Bible studies. And today we definitely see the results of what comes from the home Bible studies and how this church has grown. As you saw the pictures flashing on the screen, that's some of the results of what our church has, how we started and what we have grown into. However, however, we know that God is not done with us yet. Amen. God is not stopping there. He has more that he wants to do with this church through Pastor Donnie, through Don Mann, through Rocky, through Mark and Kathy Mann, through me, through Carolyn, through each and every one of us in this room. God has a work that he wants to see done through each and one of us today. As I come to a close, we are the messengers running through the spiritual battlefield to share the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself equips us through the giving of his Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us in order to go out into the world to preach and teach his gospel. Just like the prophets of old, of the Old Testament, we are to proclaim the coming day of the Lord. As the messenger boy going to and from each company, we are to go from our church building and to home and to our communities, running into those we meet in order to share the truth of Jesus Christ. We are not to be slow. We are not to be slothful, slothful in our efforts. But we are to go out as fast as we can, sharing Jesus Christ, his death on the cross, his burial, and his resurrection into new life. We, when we return into our church building, we are renewed in the fellowship of fellow believers as well as in our personal lives. And we are renewed on a daily basis through prayer, through reading of the scriptures, continuing to build up our own personal relationship with Christ. I challenge you this morning, today as we leave this church building, I challenge you to share Jesus Christ with someone. Pastor Donnie said that his, he's got a sermon series coming up. What is it again? God's or opening doors? Open door. Open doors. This is a perfect start to open those doors, allowing God to show you what open door to go through in order to reach those who we come in contact with in our neighborhood. Whenever we are in Johnstown, wherever we go, to make those connections. If you go out to eat at a restaurant today, ask for your server's name and make sure you get their name down and see if they have any needs that they need to pray for. And pray with them. Don't don't just let it stop there. Try to follow up with them later in the next week or so. This church has a fire of the Holy Spirit upon it. And that fire needs to be spread throughout Johnstown, throughout Lincoln and Knox counties, throughout Ohio, throughout the United States, and throughout the globe, so that all men might know Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for each person in this room. I thank you for your word, your truth that we have access to hear from you through the reading of your word. I pray that you anoint our church, anoint us to go out and minister 
as Pastor Donnie is going to be starting his new series on Open Doors, I pray that you anoint us to hear and receive your truth. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful that not just we are messengers, but that we have a message to give. God has given us a tremendous message uh, of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, I am thankful for the word of God this morning. I am thankful that they don't depend on me to write an eight-minute mile. Because that ain't happening. I got my time from yesterday. It was not eight minutes. It was not eight minutes times two. <laughs> but I believe that God is going to put an open door before us. I'm going to talk about that next week. God is going to use each and every person here. We talked about it in Sunday school. God has a ministry for each and every person here to be a messenger of the gospel. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. I will see everybody. Well, I will because I'm here. Wednesday is first Wednesday. Saturday is fellowship. 